Hello, this is Steve Cubby, and uh, we're here at uh, Heavenly Valley, and it's about 20 below zero, but uh, we don't care, we're tough. That's why we're going down the chair, down the gondola <laughs> to warm up. Can't even talk, I'm so cold. Anyway, this is Steve Cubby, Cubby TV, and today we're going to talk about something. I don't know what, but I'm sure it'll be good. Today I have one of my good friends, Weston Mickey. Now, Weston, uh, a lot of people may not know who you are and what you do, but I, I consider you one of the most amazing people, one of the most talented and important people in the cannabis movement. So, will you explain to us uh, uh, your, your background and uh, uh, what you do? Thank you, Steve, for all your comments. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to give you a little history about my background. In 2002, I started circulating petitions at Chico State as a freshman. I uh, went to school for um, agricultural science, and I uh, started working on the Gray Davis recall. And soon after, I worked on the Gray Davis anti-recall, and I saw how absolutely great the initiative process here in California is and I became obsessed with it and I started working on more and more campaigns and down the road probably about 2004 2005 I started my own petition management company and we were I was always a, a cannabis activist but um, I was able to now, let me stop you right there what got you so excited about the initiative process Seeing how effective it was, seeing how you could, a single person could go out, draft their own law, submit it, circulate it, file it, put it to the voters, pass it, and and I just saw the beauty in it. I mean, you can't. I mean, you can you can you can be more powerful than in the entire state of California if if you know what you're doing and uh, and. Uh, now that's a really good point, and I want to amplify that a little bit because you and I agree that when you write a law, you write it to be to conform with all the other laws to fit in to uh, to make it all work together. But Correct. when you do an initiative, you don't do it to fit into the law. You do it to challenge the law. If you're doing the right kind of initiative, if you're exactly. doing, if you're really using the initiative process properly you're creating challenges. None of the initiatives that I see coming out from other activists do that. They, they, they try to be legislators. They try to just pile on all these new rules and restrictions. And regulations. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's basically because they feel that they're in a position to where they have to appease the voters. And during the uh, 2010 uh, crackdown, um, we all saw that, and basically it was this uh, movement of uh, running scared and trying to do everything they could to salvage uh, medical marijuana dispensaries in the uh, state of California. And, um, and what has John changed, what, what makes this thing about initiative so powerful is that we have the votes. for the. Yeah. So as we were saying, the people are very confused about initiatives. They try to write initiatives as if they're writing a law. And initiatives have to be a lot more proactive. They have to challenge the law. Absolutely. And it's a free challenge because if you lose, you have a severability clause that keeps the rest of your initiative intact. Exactly. If, if you find a judge who feels that certain portions of your um, initiative aren't of constitutional muster, um, when you write the initiative, you always want to write a, a severability clause so you can uh, pull Chal pieces that challenge. You know, challenge, yeah, exactly. So if there's a piece that doesn't fit in, then it's just tossed, and you still have the rest of the initiative. So, um, and yeah, it's, people it, don't it, understand this. They don't get it at all. They think we need to help them out. We need to get people to understand that when you write an initiative, it's completely different than when you write a law. When you write a law, you've got to list all the other laws. You've got to list the laws that are affected. You've got to assign a, a lawful statute uh, code to your law. You don't have to do any of that with an initiative. It's their problem. After it passes, it's the, the, the government's problem to fit in the public with the law. 
and yeah. they have to accommodate. Absolutely. And Absolutely. so I see like 28 page initiatives, state initiatives and such. And I just groan because first of all, we sh nobody should be doing a state initiative in 2014. There's no way you're going to raise the money you need and it's too late. It's gone. It is. I think, uh, our, the most plausible goal to, uh, well, if we want to talk about legalization of marijuana, I think the most plausible goal would be 2016. Well, uh, I would, I would admit, I would propose that 2013 and 2014 are the years to do local voter initiatives to pave the way. For the pave state. the way, because if you've got all these local uh, jurisdictions where they've been living for a year or two or three, well, it'd be two years before 16 then the people are already used to a certain level of uh, legalization and the, the voters aren't going to have an issue. They're, they've accommodated mentally to... Uh, yeah. and, and we need people. We need people to get out and pass initiatives. Not state initiatives. Local, local initiatives. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more, Steve. And... Uh, this is the best time to do it. There is no better time to host a, a local initiative than, than right now. And uh, why is that? Why it, a lot of it has to do with other initiatives in circulation, um, page signature gathering. The um, so so there, because there, there's, there's, there's no a, competition. There's, a multitude of reasons. there's no competition right now. Exactly. If you wait, when everybody else is doing it, you have to compete for each signature gatherer. You have to compete for how much people are going to pay per signature. We don't have any of those problems right now. No, and I think that we're doing it at the best time because the new memo that came out through the uh, Obama administration saying that because Colorado and Washington have legalized marijuana that they will respect states that already have medical marijuana. So um, that being said, after one of the largest crackdowns in cannabis history, um, they have changed their tune. What we're seeing is that uh, the city officials in, in South Lake Tahoe put up a real fight. They did not like this initiative. No. They, they didn't like the thing that they really did not like is that they have to go out and arrest any police that are busting people for pot. Yeah, I think they have a huge problem with that. I think that uh, something as uh, revolutionary as that uh, has well, not the, yet been the, passed by they the They can't even get their head around it. Now, no. you and I can. Because Multiple we understand, steps. you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, what happened was throughout the state of California during the crackdown, cities and counties were inviting the federal government in to shut down dispensaries because they had yeah, no... Now stop working. right there. There has been a pattern and a practice across the entire state that any time uh, city or county officials are annoyed at some dispensary and they can't get rid of them through lawful means, they contact the DEA or some other such organization, and it's that federal organization, that federal agency that comes in and cleans house. Yeah. But they can't do it without the cooperation. Of the city and county, absolutely. And 99.9% yeah. uh, .9 of the time, during the uh, crackdown in the state of California was all done through the invitation of cities and counties. And you and never hear people talk about this, but this no, is the key. It is Th the this key. This is where it all takes place because if you, can, if you can threaten them with jail. They'll think twice about uh, undermining state medical marijuana laws. They'll... Uh, They'll know that there's consequences to their actions. and uh, Now, our know. initiative is going to pass, making it a crime to bust people for weed. And it'll get challenged. But guess who has to defend it? The city <laughs> of South Lake Tahoe. They, yeah. have to, they have to defend the whole thing. It doesn't cost us a penny. Which is great. So hopefully we have a good city attorney who can uh, properly defend it. Even you though know, I, I, thought, I thought for a minute, what if we get a city attorney who says, well, okay, if I'm in charge of... Uh, I'll just lose. But you know what? They never like to lose. Yeah. They cannot lose. Even if it's our initiative that they have to argue for, <laughs> they're going to fight. 
I love it too. I, I love that that idea. I mean, that is so great because when it boils down to it, I mean, if if you're uh, a host of an initiative and somebody keeps suing you in court, it can get pretty pricey. I mean, the attorneys are not cheap, and uh, basically, uh, I think it'll uh, it'll motivate the city to uh, to just get it through and get it going and and uh, sort of streamline the initiative. So. Um, that's what I'm least hoping for. Well, and it's I, really good I'm that they excited about this. I'm, it, I'm really, really excited. And it's good that the city attorney did challenge us because thanks to you, West and Mickey, you came up with the legal statutes. I did. I have, show. Them, <laughs> I have them all memorized. I don't know how I do it, but not but, only uh, did you show that he has to sign our title and summary, but you showed that. He could go to jail for three years if he doesn't do it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, if he it's, even delays us. Yeah, so, I mean, technically, he was in violation of the law for for um, making you go through all that rigmarole to get a if summary. If we fight. wanted to be nasty, we could probably we could, that. But, but he's too not. much of an asset, and he's hey, he's come around. He understands the initiative process as a challenge, and he actually likes that because hey, he's going to make history. I think we need to inevitably show the city attorney the, the good side of medical cannabis. Maybe take him down to a dispensary and see the sick people that use cannabis as a medicine and see There's how There's only one dispensary in South Lake Tahoe, and I would not advise people go there. I certainly wouldn't bring someone there to with, show them. With the new dispensary that, that, that you would open yes. up, maybe, and maybe we can show them you know, that you know, this, is, this is medical cannabis, this helps. You know, you know? I don't think that's going to be a problem. I, I had such a great meeting with the city attorney and the city manager because let's let's face it we bitch slapped them hard yeah <laughs> we came down on them really really hard and they're not used to that and they're not used to being wrong yeah i, I think that uh i think that uh the uh, city attorney started seeking legal advice um from outside agencies and he figured it out figured it out that he uh he was definitely in the wrong and and he was definitely in violation of the election code because there is there's nothing stronger than the state of California constitution and to the contrary of being court precedent you cannot supersede the state constitution we've had the ability to initiative um, the state um, over a hundred years so you, you can't you can't deny us that ability and that's what makes California such a wonderful place the the golden state now the green state but you know we're still golden too so you've been doing this for eleven years eleven years. <laughs> and you've learned all the tricks, haven't you? I have um, multiple campaigns, petitioned in twenty-one states. Of so you know, I, I, I got to say, if if I wanted to harm this campaign, I would check out West and Mickey first <laughs> because he is your worst nightmare. Absolutely, he knows. I don't even want to give away the tricks that you've told me about, but there are, are procedural things that you can do to pretty much screw anyone up that tries put, to mess with us. You put Dan Levine and I together in a room with, you know, legal paperwork. But yeah, I mean, I, I feel sorry for anybody that we go up against because, I mean, well, we, we, know, just did know this, this, we know how to we know how to fight the fight. And, we just uh, did this. We just did this search for oaths. Oath of office, yeah. Dan Levine is, is huge on that too. So, if anybody's in violation of of um, violating the Constitution, you pull their oath of office. Um, you can challenge it. You know, you can you can you can uh, you can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they violated their oath of office, and that's and you, a, that, you that's a potential felony. When it you is violate it is. a public oath, and they all swore to defend the Constitution, Constitution. and they lied. They lie, they lie, they lie, and we're going to catch them in that lie because yep. we're going to force them to live up to the promise that they made to the people that they would protect and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I wish that uh, more politicians took their oath of office more seriously. They're only going to do it when you and I force them to do it. Yeah, exactly. You have to sort of, you know. And we were ready to do that in this instance. We, yeah. We, we could have lawsuit. caused the city of South Lake Tahoe uh, a, a, a lot of grief and a lot of money. But you know what? We're one happy family. We're all working together. 
just yep. the way it should be. Uh, they flexed their muscles. We flexed our muscles. We have mutual respect. <laughs> Yeah, we have mutual respect, and they know that we're pretty badass, and uh, they respect that. They respect it. Yeah, yeah, and, and they know. I think that they've probably doodled your name once or twice, and, you know, I, I, I think they have an idea of who they're dealing with. So Now, where know. do we go from here? On, on uh, middle of next week, we get that certificate. I turn it in. We're going so to have our ad. Run we finally week. got our summary title. We find a uh, general circulation newspaper, uh, local newspaper. Done. It's um, already done. It's already scheduled. It's going down. We, uh, yeah, we take this. We take the summary title that the uh, city uh, attorney has provided for us and publish it in the newspaper. And then once we do that, we have a just receipt. once. Just once. Yeah, just once. We uh, yeah, we, we have we, to be detailed here because we are doing this. Dan, uh, Dan Levine, Weston, Mickey, and myself. The three horsemen. <laughs> we're, we're doing this to show people that want to change the law in their jurisdiction. Absolutely. How uh, simple it is. It, it's it, very you have simple. to be precise. You, you have can't to know, screw it up. No you got to have your, your fonts right. You got you to gotta dot all your I's and cross all your T's. But we tell you, and you, Weston, are such an authority. You will tell us. And then... People, uh, be it their county or their city, can copy what we're doing and can put an initiative on their ballot that makes it a crime to bust people for weed, stuff yeah. like that. They can just copy what we're doing or they can do their own thing. But I really hope that we can use this as an educational tool for other people and I hope that other people get off the rumps. And, you know, stop talking the talk and start their own initiative and, and, and protect their rights. I've seen it happen so many times where you get a group of individuals and there's so much. Well, hold on right there, because the third district court uh, of appeal just ruled in favor of Live Oaks up there in. Uh, yeah, Live Oak, California, where they did a prohibition ban. And uh, I was actually my friend was the person who uh, who sued. But I'll let you go ahead and explain it a little bit. No, happened. you know more about it than I do. Well, I was at the city council meeting when they enacted the um, ban. Now, nothing with this decision, because this decision is terrible. It says that even though we passed 215, even though you're sick, even though you require medicine, you cannot grow a single plant in any jurisdiction that decides that they don't like pot. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Horrible you want to decision. About the most corrupt county in the state of California, Lake County, definitely is the cherry on on the top. Well, Weston, it's been great talking to you. You, uh, I really want to thank you for all you do for our cannabis freedom, and I want to particularly thank you for taking the time to work with us so that we can explain in detail how anyone can follow our instructions and change the law in their jurisdiction. Absolutely, and, and sorry for the problems with this interview <laughs> oh, you know like we'll, like we'll the rest of us video. we all have families we all yeah. have kids and it's completely understandable you still make time to fight the good fight thank you very much no problem steve and i'll uh, i'll follow up with you down down the road so all right thank take you care. Steve. bye-bye